Welcome to the XY Advisor Podcast, where it's our goal to help you become the best financial advisor possible and drive the positive evolution of financial advice. Hub24 is an ASX-listed company with over $15 billion funds under management and one of the fastest-growing platforms in the market. Neither a bank nor part of a bank, Hub24 focuses entirely on connecting advisors to a broad range of investment solutions for their clients. Discover why other advisors think Hub24 are the best in the market and access the benefits of choice and efficiency for you and your clients with their market-leaning managed portfolio solution. To find out more, visit hub24.com.au. G'day, g'day. How's it going? What do you know? Strucker like Clayton here um, with Prashant, who I met down at our Melbourne event as a part of the XY Tour. How's it going, mate? Very good. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Clayton. Yeah, man, of course. Uh, actually, I think I, I we met because I was at the bar and I sort of turned around and because, you know, the whole, the bar tab is so taken care of. So it's, yes. you're just kind of constantly looking back going, who was it here that I saw? I saw this, the look in your eyes. I'm like, that man. Must be yeah. It. <laughs> Absolutely, it was a long day for me, and <laughs> I was looking forward to the to, to the beer and the connections. Awesome, yeah. man! Mm. And then, so we ended up catching. Found out that you're a uh, you're an innovation award winner, um, and your company Finical. We had the chance to sort of chat a little bit about. And one of the things that I really like about speaking with advisors who are doing things a little bit differently is it. it constantly you know every example breaks the mold and and by that what i mean is like i came from financial sorry i came from accounting so i was really used to charging you know for for a service right like i knew how to value my time and Mm -hmm. and then i just got indoctrinated away from that in as i entered into financial planning and it's it's kind of now it's become sort of a bit of a mission of mine to sort of track down the people that have deprogrammed themselves out of the programming that happens when you get into advice. And yours was one of the coolest stories I've heard. So man, let's, uh, let's, let's go through it. So mm-hmm. actually, first of all, explain to us what your uh, charging methodology is. So we, our value proposition is affordable financial advice, affordable and accessible financial advice to the younger generation. Um, so um, 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 our methodology for, for charging is around a monthly subscription. So uh, we recognize that the, the demographics that we serve are between the ages of 25 to 40. Mm-hmm. And these are your typical Netflix generation. Uh, you know, um, most of us hate to see the word um, hourly rates, um, contracts, lock in. We, we are so educated to be scared about those words now. And this is that generation that sort of, you know, is so used to try before you buy and that sort of thing. So knowing that this is the demographics, we thought, now let's keep it simple. Your customer doesn't care or they don't even know the difference between what an upfront and ongoing fees is to start with. Yep. So, they don't, they don't, so, so are we going, why are we trying to, this demographics, first of all, doesn't even know what financial advice exactly is, let yeah. alone how they price it and how it works on top of that. So we wanted to keep it very simple and we said, let's do this for a monthly subscription. And then the challenge was uh, to go, how do you price something and keep it as a constant, right? And because we know that every client's circumstances are different, yada, 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 and we, it's, it's impossible to have a fixed price on your, on your website. But what we then decided was, um, knowing the demographics, we wanted to start up with solving a problem that they will pay for, right? Yeah. So, um, so we found most of the surveys and everything we did, most of the problems that that marketplace found was to be able to get into their home, a place to call home by themselves, okay? And that was the most pressing point. And we decided, how about us have a, start with a goal-based subscription that, buying your home and then we know the scopes that goes into that process right because when it's one goal it's easy to identify the amount of scope that goes into it and then it makes it simpler to standardize it 
not standardize the process, not the advice, right? The advice yes. itself is different to everybody, but the, the process and the items that go into it. And that's what went into our first package uh, is uh, we think there's about 10 different scopes that can, that's the variables, but that's very likely to apply to the broader people. And that's what we make as a package. Wow. So, yeah. Man, so, okay. So when you do advertising and client acquisition, yes, you're basically saying, um, Hey, 25 to 40 year old, are you trying to get into your first house that's struggling? Yes, that's, to it. Do so? that's it. It's very, uh, I think, yeah, it's very, uh, it's targeted at the pain and, and yeah. we provide the solution to manage and cure the pain. Yes. There's vitamins around it. Yeah. <laughs> which is all good behaviors, but that comes as a part of the package anyway. So we didn't want to s propose the vitamins, but we wanted to start with the pain and sort of provide the solution to the pain. That is so cool. Do you guys do mortgages as well? Yes, it, it was an organic evolution. So we start, when we started, it was a 100% financial planning offering only. Yes. Um, and then once the proof of concept and everything started coming, it was very obvious that you, know, you need to have the conversation yourself or as a brand as at one place rather than sort of um, that getting out um, and then getting confused, right? So, so then I had to go back to school and became a mortgage broker <laughs> uh, to, to sort of uh, yeah, solve that problem too. Man, that's so cool. Actually, I remember once uh, on, a, on a podcast, um, there, was, there was a gent who had created I think it was B4, that's the name of it. It's called B4 and it was an app that allowed property managers to, to, to help buy, you know, sell, sell houses. Um, and during that podcast, I actually asked them the question, what would stop an advisor getting their uh, real estate sales license? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put a question to you. Obviously, you're... you're, you're I think this is brilliant, by the way, in terms of like identifying a niche, going after it um, and developing your business model so that you're, you're capturing more of that value that's getting spent by the, by the client. Mm -hmm. um, why would you not get into selling houses as well? Like, don't get me wrong. I realize how crazy of a question that is. I just want to finally meet an advisor that does it. <laughs> Oh, mate, it's definitely a part of our, our, our future uh, evolution on, on in terms of how we... Is that right? Yes. I mean, here's the, the challenge is to, is to manage the conflict around this, right? So, uh, I, and there's a thin line because I'm, I'm, by heart, I was a financial, I was and am a financial advisor first. Yes. And I'm very proud to, to hold that hat. And, and with everything that's going on, we're not sure how to manage the conflict around that. Okay. What's, what's but, interesting is because you're not referring externally, if it's yes. an internal, it's actually yes. under, under the current interpretation, it's actually less conflicted. To e do it e well. ex exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so until the clarity is reached there, we're going more, well, okay, let's get this process right. But then that part will take care of itself. Um, some of our research suggests if it's in-house, you're technically not even a real estate agent because it's your own product, so to speak, you know? So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so uh, we, we're getting mixed things, but again, it's it's definitely something that we'd consider. Uh, the, see, the thing is, a, your customer comes for the problem as uh, to solve yes. the problem, and yes. if everything in your ecosystem has solutions, yes, uh, the customer may like what you have, may not like what you have. That's okay, but it's just more. I just find this thing of let's have the full solution and leave it to the customer whether they want to take it or not. Yeah. Because, so we, we want to be able to have that option. Um, Man, that is, that's so fantastic. I, I know some pretty successful advisors uh, get involved in property. And I think this is one of those um, deprogramming things again, right? So yeah. you get into advice and it's like, oh, just forget about property and oh, it might not even, you might not even be allowed to talk about it. Right. Some mm, licensees, mm, mm. depending if like, especially if the licensee is aligned to a big product manufacturer, they're very much like, just mm. don't talk about property at all because any dollar that goes into property is not going into their product. And so they yes. just cut it off at the knees. And so it, it, that that's the interesting thing as well, which is, um, I'm seeing a lot of modern advisors 
um, get more and more involved in the property space. I know mm -hmm. advisors who have um, facilitated the sale of hundreds of properties, right? Mm -hmm. and, they've, mm -hmm. and they've done remarkably well. And this was over the course of like decades and, you know, mm -hmm. decades later, they're sort of all, all their clients are like, oh my God, thank you so much. You know, you, you, you helped us uh, purchase a property and it's done so well. And, which is really cool to sort of look back on the history and, and say, I played such a big role in, in this person's life, which ultimately is the goal of a financial advisor. Mm. Um, so what I find interesting is you've got this unique sales proposition or unique client acquisition proposition, mm -hmm. a unique service. Mm -hmm. um, you've got the mortgage and then the property is sort of a, future potential, but we'll figure that out when we get there. Mm -hmm. How long do you have the data on how long it on average it takes someone to purchase a property from the time they walk into the door to the time they get the keys? Approximately 12 months. Whoa, that is super quick, man. Yeah, uh, there's three styles of people that walk into the door. Um, just starting out halfway there and almost there. Okay. Um, the halfway there is take anywhere between um, six to 12 months. Wow. Okay. Because they your typical patterns are there's about 20, 25,000 in their bank account. They start, you know, this, 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 this is probably the biggest lot of money that they've ever seen in their life. And now they're going, this distant doom is not distant anymore. I can actually start thinking about this. Yeah. It starts getting real. So then, you know, that's your, that's that market, six to 12 months there. Your almost theirs are usually not the ones you want to, it's hard because there's a lot of preset um, objectives that they've got. Um, they, it's more, they want you to come in for the transaction, not the actual advice. You see so what I mean? work as a buyer's advocate almost? Yes, pretty much. It's more like they've already made up their mind. They know where they want to go. They know how much they want to spend, you know, because they've got that 50,000 now in their bank account, right? So they've, yep. so all those advice spaces are gone, okay? But when it's a halfway there, we're able to say, Mr. Customer, this is, I know this is what you can, a bank will give you, but I think only this is what you should borrow just mm. because all the other goals and objectives that you said is going to get affected. That's fantastic. Right? People need to hear that, man. Yeah, so most of what we do uh, is, is around taking that whole thing and giving the bigger picture to the customer. Yes, you can go, you can buy a million or spend a million, but I'd say stick to 600 just because you're planning a family in two years. <laughs> <Yeah. Nah. laughs> you're not going to have the two income that you said you're going to have. So, you know, so, so, so let's not do that. So it's easier to manage expectation and have an open-minded conversation with the, the people that are in that halfway their cycle or even the starting out cycle. Whereas the ones in the, in the almost their cycle, which is that 50 plus savings, it's, there's a lot of preconceived notions that's already there and it's hard to start an open-minded conversation there. Wow. So um, out of those three, mm. starting out halfway there, um, mm. nearly there or mm. almost there, mm. what percentage mm. of people that come in through the door mm. are each of those categories? Um, most people... Uh, um, as a paying member, so this is where we're seeing the difference between at what what's the point where people are ready to pay. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's the halfway there. Right. Uh, um, the the almost there feel it's still too far for them to get into a paid commitment. However, they'd like for you to be or them to be a part of this freemium ecosystem if we have one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I understand okay. the concept. Yeah. Uh, and, and then the, the premium gets into that halfway there. Um, right. the, the almost there, again, don't want to. So, yeah, they, they, they're, they're also not seeing the value in the paid version there. Right. Because to them, at that point, they're hard to different, they find it hard to differentiate between who's a mortgage broker and who's a financial advisor at that point. Yeah, that because they're, they're talking to their bank. And, and that's the problem that I'm finding at the moment is, is this whole challenge of scope creeping per se there's different professions that we've got and no one's ready to draw the line to say oh not many are ready to, that's not my sphere <laughs> uh, and say i think you need someone else to help you with that but everyone wants to save their business i guess in those domains that they specialize in they just try to sound more than what they are and what they're allowed to yes. you see so um and that's where i find the end consumer in that almost their section, they, they find it very hard to differentiate. What are you doing? What's that, you know, that sort of thing. So, 
Um, and what's your main client acquisition strategy? Is it uh, Facebook ads? Is it uh, workshops? What are you doing? Um, we, we started off uh, 100% on Facebook. That's how the whole business started off at. Um, wow. Not a single client, no friends and family that we knew that was wow, there. Man. So our first sign up was a, it was a Facebook, you know, a lead that Ew. came through Facebook. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, man. So we, we, we didn't know what, how that worked. So I'm again, you know, as a financial planner by trade and I'm going, you know, um, uh, yeah. So it was very exciting, but, but it was very interesting also that we took the time to learn about how these things work. Yes. So we, there wasn't any marketing agencies involved. We literally opened the book and started reading what is Facebook advertising, what social media, oh. what are conversion rates. So we had to go back to the drawing to make things effective. And um, we started learning about what kind of, uh, you know, wordings work, what should be your ideal word count in an ad and how you place it and, you know, everything. Yes. We, so it took us a lot of time out of our, technical financial advising hat but we were all the whole team was wearing a marketing hat and everyone was trying to learn everything to make a go um so yeah mate that's that's fantastic and then so uh what are we talking in terms of leads per week at this stage mate so although we started out as um through the facebook channel yes we the last six months we've literally posted Really? Now, yeah, we've posted and now Just we... Too much, too much demand. Not too much demand. It's more, we were, we've now started onboarding people and our capacity was really full and we wow. didn't want to onboard further and drop the ball on the existing client experience. So we said, hang on, it's okay. We'll just post it for now. We'll, we'll focus on. So the last six months is always, is, is uh, the only way we were onbo are onboarding in the last six months have been client referrals. We wow. don't want to say no to them, but we, we, we said no to the Facebook world for, for the time being. Um, yeah. Man, that's pretty cool. Like, and and it's, it's kind of common as well where you get an advisor that says, okay, I want to create, you know, start my own reign. I got to go out. What are the tactics? You know, it, tactics A, B, C, D. And I've, I've spoken to a bunch of advisors and there's a bunch of different um, tactics out there. And they all kind of work, and, but they're all sort of linked to social media at the end of the day. Mm. Then after a little bit of sort of toing and froing, they eventually figure it out, their own little system that works for them. Mm. And then they start getting success up until the point where they go, oh, actually, I'll just, I'll stop doing it because uh, I'm getting a fair few new clients and now referrals are coming in. And I'll tell you what's hilarious is that most of the time they never go back. Yes. So all, the, so all the skill set that they, <laughs> they learn. And it must be, I mean, it, it's a good sign, right? And, yes. And it's always a very good thing to have up the sleeve that if you ever need to turn the rain back on or if you yes. pull a lever, then it, it's right there, right? You've it is. Got the whole system. But, um, but it's, it's interesting that you're sort of finding this, a similar situation. And then obviously, if you don't have to work so much, on uh, marketing and client acquisition, then you move pretty much entirely to customer service, good client experience, and then filling up more of that value chain so that your, your uh, profit per client goes up and they enjoy the, the process more and they get more out of it. So is that yes. kind of where you're at at the moment? It's, it is. It, yes, it is. Uh, but however, we are... We are wanting to be very cautious of the point that you just mentioned that, you know, you, you sort of get used to the, I mean, obviously referrals, people looking for you is the easiest way, right? Is the yeah. easiest way to do business, right? Rather Absolutely. than you going preaching your, your value prop outside. But um, yes, but this tap can turn down at any point. So I think it's to us, um, I'm, I'm definitely committed to the whole social media advertising. We haven't pulled out from we how we pulled out is instead of saying we're not going to market we're still technically marketing but we're marketing beta we beta testing so to speak sure so we are testing out new um freemium concepts that you know for the freemium market what we yeah. find is the pre freemium market wants uh, they probably have five thousand and the savings and they want to help with the deposit element and they're not ready to pay the on board, you know, ongoing thing. So what we're now doing is creating a 
a deposit savings as a small freemium um, um, product or the advice solution as a product. And we're testing it out, expression. Right now, we're still taking expression of interest rather than let's talk now. I like that. So, so what's the, so? Are you using something like a, a my prosperity or something to the equivalent of giving that giving uh, each person who wants a freemium model? You're providing them some level of technology where you can track what they're doing. Yes, and then you're able to provide a little bit of reporting. Um, it doesn't cost much time or effort or money on your end. Yes, um, but you're just essentially, you know, their journey is being tracked and monitored via your company and then yes. at some stage you, you'll pull together a business plan out of that as well that's correct yes so that's the intention is to is to be a, so most of what we do since the start of this we were very open with the the demographics that we serve in using words like pilot in a proof of concept and uh, and and because what we find is the people that we work well with are early adopters, right? People, yeah. you know, these are, these are you know, typically, these are the people that stand first in the line overnight for an iPhone, the new next iPhone release, so to yeah. speak, right? They can't right. wait one day. They have to be the first to do that. So we, we find it's a, we need to find the right kind of person to start doing this. So we've been very open about, this is what we think we're going to do. Do you want to be a part of this? And mm -hmm. as a result of this experience, you know, thing, yes, the advice is all authorized, licensed and everything, but the, the, how we deliver this is something that we're learning as we go. Would you love to be a part of this? And it's just amazing how many people are willing to give a crack at that and work with you. And, and they're very, um, what do you call it? Um, very forgiving if you miss some, if you make mistakes. Yeah, man. Forgiveness is a big thing. Uh, if you, you know, early adopters, Thank God for early adopters, you know, and, yes. I, and I've been an early adopter before, uh, you know, and, and you're almost like so happy to be a part of helping this company create history that mm. you're, you accept that things just go wrong. And, yes. uh, and that, that's cool, man. Like I really dig the way that you're positioning um, your conversations or mm. the marketing so that, they're not expecting it, you know, everything to run a hundred percent well oiled. Yes. Um, what's on, on X, Y's side, the interesting thing is like advisors typically are very much on board uh, with us in terms of, you know, we, we, over the years, we've done so many different things. We've tried so many different angles and, and uh, you know, we've got a pretty good idea of what works, but on our, on our revenue side, which is essentially, you know, advertising and support for, for these large financial services companies, mm -hmm. these companies are not typically your, um, your early adopters, right? They're these yeah. huge established companies. And, yes. so, and so it's kind of interesting, like on our, on our, cause we're really a double sided marketplace where we serve advisors and, and serve corporates as well. And we, yes. get, all, we get all the love from the, uh, the advisor side and, you know, we're, yeah. we're always on our toes a little bit with the corporate side. So yes, yes. <laughs> it, it, it's hard to, you know, there's like the, the, the right wing side of the, the spectrum and then there's a left wing side of the spectrum and <laughs> yeah. trying to balance both. Yes, yes, I hear what yeah. you mean. So, so you've, you've done well to identify those people. So, yeah. um, so is there an SOA in this process at all? Or 100%, 100%, 100%. Okay. So it's more, we, we make it sound easy to the customer, but the, it's, it's very much the old wine and the new bottle. That's all. The old wine still is the same. It's still, unfortunately at the moment, it's still that 30, 40 page SOA, right? It's still the same. Yeah. Uh, but it's about how we modulate this is how do we get to an SOA? It takes about four to five months to get to that SOA stage. That's interesting. That's uh, really interesting. And, and, and so it's important that the customer, when they're on board, they understand it's a journey rather than here's a solution tomorrow. No, that's not going to have, it's going to work. Uh, we, we're going to educate you. We're going to have a needs-based conversation and we go back and forth on this and we finalize exactly what you're comfortable with. And then, because most often they're not, they don't know what they want. Oh, well, okay. But they know, do they at least know that they want a house? Yes. That's, that's the broad, that's how broad this is. Right. Right. And our job is to, in, in the next five X amount of months is to get it to that point. 
Okay, that's the variable. So instead of starting with 50 different ways this can go, you yeah. want to narrow it down to five different ways this can go. And that yeah. point and, and that point where the customer is absolutely clear, this is how far we want to do this. That's when the, the traditional SOAs and everything starts coming out. The actual advice itself uh, is generated a little bit into the, the relationship. That's so awesome, mate. Like uh, this is something I was just chatting with Jim Stackpole about the other day. Mm. And uh, it's so true, you know, if I go back to my financial planning career, I, I don't know why I just totally felt that an upfront SOA was so mandatory, but it definitely, definitely is not. Yes. So, so in that case, are you doing a fair bit of education? With, yes. And, and are you doing this education one-to-one or do you have like videos that you're sending them? As, um, so when we started and at the moment, uh, we, it started the first year. So we are, we've just crossed a two year mark in, in business. So okay. the first year was very manual and one-on-one in nature, uh, because we wanted to log those pain points, the most f- frequently asked and the most frequently yeah, said, yeah. yes, unfortunately, yes. On day one, these kind of things are never scalable, right? It, it doesn't look like it's going to scale. You tell this to anyone and people go, you're an idiot, you know? <laughs> Uh, we charge three hundred dollars an hour, and you you're doing this for ninety nine bucks a month. You know, uh, yes, of course it's not scalable. I get that, but it's yeah. more unless you do the things that can't scale, and 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 learn from it. You can never build the things that's going to scale. You know, totally. Um, totally yeah. So so once we finish that, now we're sitting on a lot of data of which is the most frequently asked and the most impactful stuff. And now the video library gets created now. So wow. we, our agenda for the next year is not growth, but it's to invest in these tools that will help us scale. So we're not looking at an exponential growth in the next year or so. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I dig that. So you, you're setting a foundation for your business model so that in, say, I mean, five years from now, you, you, you could potentially be servicing, you know, a thousand clients yes. a week kind of thing. Yes. That's huge, man. Congrats. Yes. That's so awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's yeah. the, I guess that's the, the larger plan, but we'll see. Yeah, of course. <laughs> we're we're optimistic and we, we're, we're very, um, yeah, we're, we're very, uh, it, it's about how do we, it, um, it's, it's uh, what we found is about scaling. Not It can't be just, it can't be Prashant, right? It can't be just me. It has to be a bigger organization that grows and it cannot be this whole one man band kind of a, a, a thing. So uh, the process, what we do must be scalable and duplicatable by the next advisor and the next advisor and the next team that yeah. comes on board. And that's where we're trying to, um, you know, get at. So the process is scalable and duplicatable, but yes, your advisor personality is yours and how you manage your ecosystem is yours. Yeah. I mean, uh, for, for $99 a month, like for $99 a month, if I, if you could, if I, if I was looking to buy a house and, you know, I'm in your demographic. So if I was yes. looking to buy a house and I didn't know anything about money and then on Facebook or one of my friends or I see something somewhere and they go and they, oh, $99 a month, our clients buy their house within 12 months yeah. and l- learn everything you need to know. Yes. Um, man, that is, that's so worth it. Yes. You know what I mean? Like that Absolutely. is so worth it. I think the other challenge about the $99 figure, one, apart from that being a very sellable, presentable and a marketable number, what we felt was that is still a big ask because the demographics are accumulators. Their biggest wealth is the income. Mm -hmm. And more often than not, that's a 1% of their wallet share. Mm -hmm. That $99 a month, okay, that's a big ask for someone who's making 120 grand a year or 100 grand a year. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. So yes, on, for, when we look at it on a business level and an advisor level, we go, ah, that's peanuts. But if we turn the table, it's a 1% wall. Well, you know, that guy or that girl or that family is putting aside 1% this. And I think that's, that relationship is what I wanna, we want to respect. And that is yeah. a big ask uh, for them. And, and our job is to show that value in it for them. Man, I, I, one of the things that I think uh, advisors can do really well, but I've never met too many of them that do this, but I'm thinking perhaps in your model, it would make sense. Provide some education around how to ask for a pay rise. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. It's such a simple thing. And yet it's kind of difficult to find the right information. But if you can, if you could say $99 a month, 
you know, it's going to be 1% of your wealth, but we're going to help you. Um, you know, our, our clients say, you know, the average person saves 4%, our clients save 30%. Yes. Um, we can help you, you know, our average client gets a pay rise of 2%. Um, you know, mm. it just like a lot of these really simple things, but they just add so much value to the, the individual's life. Yes, absolutely. There is a lot of non-financial, uh, you know, non-financial um, product related stuff yeah. that we can more certainly add value to. Yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah. So um, when you, when you, so are you still doing meetings via Zoom then? Oh, a hundred percent of a business is through Zoom. Oh, really? So you, you don't, you, no one comes to the office. You don't go. Now, what you see now is what a client sees. This is, this is home and office and we're a distributed team of six right now. And everyone got, everyone works from their own place. That's so crazy, man. Yeah. <laughs> this is so this awesome. is what you what we're seeing now is pretty much what the first meeting <laughs> with a new lead from Facebook looks like. As really? Well. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. And and so, at what stage do you go? Uh, what's your process in terms of someone on boards? Let's say it takes six months to get to an SOA. Mm-hmm. What what are the thing? What's the steps you go through uh, cumulatively before you get to the advice? Sure. The, the first month um, would be focused more around goal planning. Okay. Um, uh, and priority settings and that sort of thing that we, um, um, you know, w- that we are trained to sort of probe. Uh, and the next month, so the subsequent months will be around collecting further. So how we see this is about the first contact is, is there's a lot of raw data right? What the customer wants, what they have, you know, they'd say, well, what do you have in your super? They'll say 30 grand. They won't have anything else, right? So <laughs> the data at that point is very raw, both in terms of what they're wanting and what they think they have. And about in our job is to get, refine this data to as accurate as possible within the first three months. Um, and, and, and the best, and then we see how do you refine this data and get very practical about it? The only way to get that is through education, right? So yep. once we gather, this is all the stuff that the customer says they want in, the, in, a, in their life. The second month is about having a needs-based conversation on each thing, you know? There's a needs-based conversation just dedicated. So it's about probably a one-hour session just on the house, okay? Or two or three one-hour sessions on the house alone, okay? Yeah. Uh, and then they say, I want to make sure I invest for my kids and I save for my kids. And that's a separate conversation on the world of investments and fundamentals of investing, right? And that data, once they know how those things work and how, you know, for the first time they talk, we talk to them, it's they've only seen ads where things say, buy this property goes up 10% per year, you can't lose, you know, that's what they see. And in our education session, we go, yes, a bad year means you can lose 20% and a good year means you can make 20%. And this is the bandwidth, how, what would you like? And they go, no, I don't like the negative 20%. <laughs> Great, let's talk about this, you know? So it's, it's, it's about how do you stretch the risk profile conversation over a few sittings to give them yeah. time to digest the whole thing. So that's what we, we do. So at that, that first three months or so, we, 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 we will have a lot of information to sort of go, right, now we're dealing with an educated customer. Let's now, you know, uh, get to the advice. Man, that's so awesome. And one of the things um, that uh, actually I was, I was at an event last night and there was an advisor talking and they were saying how oftentimes because it's difficult to make a meeting with people, mm-hmm. even even with Zoom, that he will just do a lot of like, especially once once they're an ongoing client, um, he'll do a lot of Loom videos. So yes. he'll record, you know, the the outputs, the information, and then send it to the client. So whether they're married or they're single, um, they can consume it in their own time. Do you do anything like that? Or do you yes. just, oh, you do that as well? Yes, yes, yes. A loom is, uh, is very valuable. It's, it's a very, very extremely valuable tool. Um, so we use a lot of that. Um, we've, uh, um, it's, it's more, we, we, we took, when, when we started with this, we, we wanted to sort of rethink every single thing that we do and take away the things that don't add value, right? So what we felt was even, customer feels more connected when we have a 
a, a platform to communicate that's sort of exclusive for just them, right? Email is something that goes, I send it and they get it, you know, and before you know it, there's about 150 emails exchanged with 200 attachments or whatnot, right? So at some point, um, it's about making sure everyone understands where this is at. And sometimes when you send emails, the husband's on it, the wife's not on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, they, they say, look, and, and for us, it's about how do we communicate to a point where both parties are engaged and involved and, and the entire team is on top of what is happening with that customer. And what, how do we make sure this communication is safe and then it, and it's engaging, right? Let's, there's a difference between sending an FSG attachment just because it's a compliance box versus, <laughs> versus doing it with the actual intent of, you know, uh, you know, yes. uh, so, um, Anyway, so what we've, we, we, we've asked people is what sort of platforms do they use at the moment that they communicate with friends and family? Yeah. What's their you preferred platform, um, SMS? Uh, what's, you know, it's, it's about what platform do you love communicating with? We're finding most people use WhatsApp and then they enjoy using WhatsApp. And no, no way. So you, you, you ask them what platform they would like to be communicated on. What's then, their favorite? Yeah. What's, 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 and, what, yeah. and then so you guys work around what WhatsApp. They yeah. What they say. So we find WhatsApp is probably the most universal. About 99% <laughs> of people say that's Dude, so. And then no way. Don't, don't tell me. Can you upload files to WhatsApp? Yeah, you can, but we, we don't upload files to WhatsApp. It's more okay. about communication, so to speak. But it'll be like, yep, I've sent an email, but here, you know, this is what's happening. And I'll say, um, you know, dear admin, can you follow up on this? And, you know, it's all happening there. And, and the wife has a question at 10 o'clock in the night when she's trying to think about a house thing. She, she types the message right there. Um, our team is able to respond to that message the next morning. The hubby sees what's happening. Everyone's sort of really engaged. It's not like we've got to wait for a meeting to to you know to sit and talk and answer questions and vice versa if we've got a light bulb moment that goes in on that so you know so they check. have group chats with their planner they have group chats with finical's team and 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 the and the yeah and them so they they have access to the entire team that is so cool i've never heard of that before and it's free and it's free <laughs> that is insane well done yeah. So, and it's, and, and also it's easier for us to file not evolutions as well. We just, we just copy the whole thing, put it on a file and it's there. Or can you open up WhatsApp like on a desktop? Or something? Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we run it from a desktop. Yeah. And then you just, you know, control a select all. Copy, select all. Yep. Yeah. Paste that's in the file note. Yes. Because, <laughs> because what, what happens is it's hard for us to, you know, how many times what we found in my past experience is the customer says, I want this and the start of it. Okay. Yes, yes. And somehow one year later in the relationship, what you're doing is very different to them because over the time they educate and they go, you know, for example, let's say if someone calls up saying, I want an SMSF. Okay. Yeah. Yes. That's oh, your first man. file note there. Right. Yes. And then your SOA. And once you've sort of spoken to the customer says, retain Australian super, whatever, right? Okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And if we don't log this evolution properly, we're all in trouble. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. You did not capture the customer's information, whatever, right? So what yep. we wanted to do is we, we, are, we are saying there are some key parts of conversations that change the direction on what we're doing. Definitely. Okay. And those moments happen maybe once a month with this client. Yeah, of course. And, but when, and it's all tracked because it's all in the same place on these group chats. On these group chats. Okay. So, yeah. Um, so that it's easy. Very awesome, mate. Like, it's so funny. You know, you're exactly right. You know, any, any sort of business stuff that I do, one of the first things that happens is it's a group chat in, uh, in WhatsApp. People, yes. just, people just love it. But you've taken that and now... So would you say that is a core part of your communication methodology with your to client? To the client. Base? Yeah, with, with the client base, that becomes a one. So when, when they become a paid member, that becomes a very, the core part of the communication and your little medias and everything happens in that. You know, you share your little medias on that. And you, yeah, so, so it's more, Man, that yeah. Is, that is one of the coolest tips and business methodologies I've ever come across. You should be like, I, I, now you've mentioned it, it seems crazy that it, everyone's not already doing it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think, I think, uh, I think a lot of answers I, to, to the problems that we're all facing, I think it's in front of us. We, we, I think we're all just blind. Oh, we've got this old way, oh, a way that we were trained to think. Yeah. And, and we're not, um, you know, we're not sort of uh, re, you know, 
unlearn and relearn, I think we all have to do right now, especially in the time of change that we are going through right now. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, yeah. And that's what made us to basically think, okay, what is, how do we make effective communications with our customer was the problem we wanted to solve. And then we reverse it and go, ah, there's this thing that we, are, we already use and why don't we start using it, for example. So. It, it's something that Jim Stackpole said to me the other day. He said, um, when because we were talking essentially about this exact topic, which was why, why does advice consider itself so different? Like why, why does it have to, you know, why aren't we using WhatsApp, for example, although that wasn't a part of the conversation, but I, I mean, it's a brilliant. And he said, it's because there's people out there that get paid to make sure it seems more complicated than it is. Yes. I'm like, okay, fair enough. But I'm, I'm a massive fan of whenever someone goes, actually, this is how humanity operates currently. And it, it makes a lot of sense for my company to do this for multiple reasons from client um, experience through to compliance, which is perfect, right? If you can increase client experience and increase compliance at the same time. Yes. Uh, I mean, that makes it a huge no brainer. What is your, um, what is, I mean, do you do digital fact find or do you, do you, do, yes. do you use a third party company or have you just created something on Google forms or like, what, what do you do there? So we, um, our fact finds are digital. It's currently been collected using Zoho, um, you know, Zoho CRM, um, yep. and we, we send, uh, um, you know, links for customers to complete. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so that's what we're doing at the moment. But uh, we, we, we have this culture of having multiple fact finds. What does that mean? So, well, we, the way we operate is there's the master fact find that we all need to deliver the advice, which is broken down into a series of smaller fact finds, right? Right. Right. And your, when you throw that 40, 30 page fact finder or whatnot, you know, at a people, you're just overwhelming them. Um, and, and you're sort of discouraging them to put a lot of thought into what they're asking for. Agreed. But if you, if, if your master fact find has 20 sections and you give them at 10, 20 different fact finds over a course of the three months, there's very quality information that comes through it because yeah. each time you send something they they it's very narrow and 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 they're able to think better about when they answer that um you know so so we we have that and then once those data are cal collected over that time frame we pre-build the, the big one and i've just i've just imagined it so you're in the group chat there's a little bit of conversation going on bam another another zoho form is sent. yes yes and then it's opened up on their phone and just... they do it right there and we get the answer that what they're wanting it's 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 captured at that moment and it's much more purer and as i said before it's about how do we convert raw data into pure data and use that for processing and 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 this is our uh this is yeah i guess the methodology or the, the thought that goes behind it i i i'm loving what you're saying because um if i think about where advice is going um it, it is going to rapid, like you have to either, in my opinion, create either a company like yours. And I actually haven't seen one or heard of one like yours. You should really oh, win an innovation award. <laughs> <laughs> Thank but, you. But, but, you know, in in yeah. my mind, I was like, this company, although I don't know what it looks like, yeah. has to spring from somewhere. Right. Yes. And then the other one is, you know, you're charging. Uh, anywhere between five and ten thousand dollars a year, probably a, a, as an upfront fee and as an ongoing fee, and you, and uh, and you you're charging a lot and have almost the opposite mm. version of your, um, and I think both of those can be insanely valuable to the client, yes, segmentation and insanely valuable to the advisor because yeah. uh, they're um, acquiring clients that are appropriate to their business model and to a degree that their business model can, can handle. Like, as we just mentioned before, I mean, once you're set up, like fully set up and I can see the way that you think about things like in five years time. Yeah. Why couldn't you have a business in America doing it? 
That's correct. Yes. <laughs> that I think. So cool. I, I mean, the, I think the the other thing as well, a part of this is the amount the team that goes behind the scene. Okay, and and um and for, for us, uh, we we were able to sort of very clearly see the price pressure is always going to be there, and we are seeing a very distribu a very different change into the workforce as a result of this, right? Yes. So, uh, we, and you know, if you've, if you've just compared the time that we're living in right now, you've got like things like Upwork, Fiverr, Freelancer, whatnot, you know, your workforce, you don't have to have that full-time person sitting next to your desk anymore, totally. you know? So, so, um, and, and, and the challenge is about how do we, so what I'm telling now is an idea, but you need the right kind of people behind you to pull this off. Right. And I'm sure you, you work, you know, you, you understand with what you built there with X, Y and everything. So, that's the next challenge, right? Thinking about it, thinking very, um, you know, like this is different, but you need the right team to pull it off. Mate, hundred percent. Have you, have you done much hiring from Upwork? Yes. Yes. We do a lot of our hiring from Upwork. We, we have, uh, yeah, we, we're very open-minded about, uh, yeah, uh, how that works. Uh, I mean, when it goes to Upwork, it's usually something more less sensitive, such as, oh, yeah. um, you know, marketing work or, yep. yeah, that sort of uh, thing. Or we need to create a template, you know, presentation template, get me one and that sort of stuff. But when it's more sensitive stuff, we keep it within ourselves and, you know, um, yeah. or, or so we have an internal team and standard team. You know? Yeah, so, no, I, I understand what you mean. Anything that's sensitive is, is internal and anything that's not sensitive, you, you can it, it's, do it yeah. where you can. Yeah. Um, one of the coolest uh, strategies for um, hiring staff off Upwork, I found sort of by accident, is because a lot of times, uh, you know, it's hit and miss, right? Yes. And the two things were, I can't guarantee quality until they've done the work. And I can't guarantee that they're going to do the work in a timely fashion yes. until they've done the work. And so I yes. was like, it was like this really difficult thing where both of those things I needed to figure out how to solve, but I couldn't solve them until they'd done the work. And so yes. what I started doing, and I um, highly recommend you give this a shot if you can, um, is asking them to do 10% of the work, like yes. a, as a submission for yes. whether they, you know, like, cause you, you know, put, you put the job up and now I say, this is the job, uh, as part of the application, yes. um, do 10, do this. Right. Yes. And it's yes. like, like, I can tell so much from that. I can tell you've read my yes. uh, job description. First of all, yes. you're not just slamming, you know, applications out everywhere Two, you've got, the time put aside to actually do this right yes. so i know i'm not going to be waiting on it yeah. and number three i'm going to be able to tell what your quality is exactly so, and, yeah. and it's 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 never enough of the work so that i could walk away and use the thing right like mm. it's not like no one could ever say that you're just trying to get someone to work for you for free because what's well, unusable in its current format like and in, in you make you make that clear um and with without a doubt the it's typically like one person, maybe two, but typically one person comes back and does that thing. And yes. like, Great. Let's that's it. That, you know, yeah, that's the person. Yeah. That's the person, you know, because yes. they went to the effort. And so that, yeah, so that, that's the thing that I like to tell everyone um, that hires regularly from Upwork, yeah. Yep, 100%. So, yeah. Good tip there, mate. Yeah, man. <laughs> All right, well, look, thanks so much for your time. No I, worries. I am so glad we actually sat down and did this because we were chatting at the time, but obviously, you know, the X, Y's events, there's so many people everywhere. It's very loud and there's beers going around, yes. but it was yes. awesome to sit down, just spend the time and ask you a couple of questions. I think what you've done there, you should be really proud of yourself. And I, I totally see you succeeding and great business name, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Right. I appreciate it. Um, just one last thing to, to add to this is the biggest learning we've found in this entire journey till date is how to listen to your customer and you know and your customer for us have decided what the next set of uh subscription offering is you know so we now we started out with that one thing and they kept telling this is what i want this is what i want this is what i like and now we've got four different types of subscriptions now so you know i think it's about just being open-minded listen to what your customers are saying and more importantly to the stuff that they're not saying <laughs> and 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 you can definitely build a, a very strong proposition within your practice if you if you can listen to the stuff they're not saying 
are you asking in an unstructured way or are you asking as a survey after a certain point in time? Um, um, at the moment, it's, uh, uh, the survey is definitely happening. That's a structured survey. But we found that the best product evolutions or they are, um, are, you know, are evolutions are happening in the non-structured way when we are able to probe based on voice. Um, um, the, the surveys are great. There's a, there's, it gives you a pattern of where your customers are going. But the depth of that is only voice. So we, we make sure there's a voice-related survey that happens. Uh, and the voice-related survey is never from the advisor. It's from someone else. And, and you know, uh, and we, we're really focusing on listening better, uh, you know. Yeah. Man, awesome. Well, look, if there's any advisors out there that need advice on buying a house, how do they reach out to you? <laughs> www.philical.com.au <laughs> That's awesome, man. Thank you so Great. much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Leighton. Lovely catching up with you, mate. See you. Mate. Bye. Bye. See ya.